Hey everyone, this is Katie here again, and I want to welcome you to the second video in our AI series where we extend your knowledge around TM1. Today I'll be showing you how to configure a new server instance in TM1 version 10.1.1. There's a new tool called IBM Cognos Configuration, which makes it much simpler to set up a new TM1 server than it used to be. This tutorial assumes you've already installed TM1 with the required components for hosting a server. You can watch the first video in this series if you need any help with installing TM1. Now let's get started. First, I'm going to make a new folder where the new server instance will reside. It's just going to be called TM1 on the C drive. Then I'm going to create two folders, one for data files called data and one for log files called logs. You don't have to designate subfolders for the data and log files, but your folder might get messy if you don't, and it's a good habit to be organized with your files anyways. Now we need to put a configuration file in this directory. The sample servers come with configuration files that have most of the parameters already filled. So what I'm going to do is copy over the config file that comes with the sample model and just change a few of the parameters. We'll be taking the config file from the Great Outdoors sample. Select the Program Files folder, followed by IBM. Go into Cognos, then TM1. The sample is located within a folder called Samples in the TM1 install directory. The configuration file must always be called tm1s.cfg. So let's just copy it over, then open it up. There are a few things we need to change before the new server is ready. We will be ignoring some of the more complex parameters for now, and we'll just be changing the ones we need to get the server to run properly. The names of the directories for the data and log files need to be changed to the ones we just made. The server name can be anything really. Just don't use symbols like the ampersand, dollar sign, percent sign, or pipe as that could give you problems later on in development. The port number just has to be a free port on your computer. It's a good idea to change it in case you want to run samples later on. Two TM1 servers can't run on the same port, and you will encounter problems if they are configured that way. Next, the admin host is the name of the machine that is running an admin server that can manage this TM1 server. In this case, it's on the same machine called localhost. This might seem confusing to people new to TM1, but it allows for a distributed environment where you have dedicated machines for each of these roles for performance purposes. So now we save that file, and the server is all ready to be started. Now we can use the new tool called IBM Cognos Configuration to start the new server. Go to Programs, TM1, Cognos Configuration, to launch the utility. First, you will have to start the admin server. Right click on it and select Start. This is all you really need for now, but I'm going to start the Excel and application servers as well. These allow users to interface with the web version of TM1. Next, we will create a new instance of TM1. Right-click on TM1 Server and select New Resource, TM1 Server Instance. Now this is important. The name you specify here has to match the server name you created in the config file. In our case, it's called Archigent. Next, the server configuration path is the path to the config file we just created. In our case, it's in the directory c colon backslash tm1. After you type it in, hit enter. Now, right click on the new server and select start. Click yes to save changes. 
If you got all check marks, congratulations! Now you can exit the utility. It will ask if you want to start all the other servers and you can just say no. So let's check and see if we can see our new server in Architect. Go to Start, Programs, IBM Cognos TM1, and over to Architect. The default username is admin with a blank password. Now you should be able to see the new server you created. Notice there are no objects yet. Well that's it for today's lesson. Stay tuned for the next video in our series where we'll be covering how to create a new dimension within TM1. Thanks for watching!